I learned to run before I learned how to walk. And that pretty much describes my entire approach to life. I, I had a really lucky life. I was married to the love of my life. I had two kids, two dogs. Omar and I imagine a life together, and in that life as a family. I was a legend in the music industry. I was a PhD student uh, studying political science at Harvard. And then, wham. I felt like I was invincible. We think I actually got sick in 1990 just after a trip to East Africa. And over the weekend, it became obvious that I had some sort of a cold. I had a 105 degree fever, it lasted for 10 days. And as far as I was concerned, a cold attacks you, screw the cold. And I had a blackout when I came to, I couldn't read a word. Um, when the check came, I couldn't sign my name. It was as if it was written in Cyrillic alphabet. So my brain was burning. I disappeared entirely and no one knew why. And among the people who hadn't a clue was me. I... The doctor had said to me, everything you're feeling is in your head. We uh, doctors are the most arrogant um, of professionals. Got the answer right here, ladies and gentlemen, to everything that ails you. Know, Except for problem. doctors. Nobody doubted I was really sick. Well, one's got to insist that this is a physical disease, that this is not a psychiatric disease. The severity of the illness is equivalent to congestive heart failure. What is lying in bed in pain staring at a wall but some kind of living death? There's an acquired form of an immunodeficiency disorder. If you go back historically, you can see illnesses very similar to this called many different things. It affects one million people in the United States. CDC admits that 85%, that's 850,000 people, have no diagnosis. Less than half the doctors in this country know the name of this illness. I don't know of another illness like that. 70 to 75% of the patients are female. You just don't have doctors going to guys saying if you change the color of your hair, you would feel better. If you could you know, get a younger wife, you would feel better. We're invisible. Your family sees you, nobody else does. They just literally waste away, just, just waste away. The despair of hopelessness was astonishing. Four or five of my patients commit suicide over the years. It's just devastating. How many people are going to have to get sick with this disease before they pay attention to it? We think that there is very, very likely to be some sort of infectious culprit. You never know who's going to actually be afflicted. And it was just a group of people, a committee, that happened to be pulled together by the CDC and it came up with this perfectly horrid name, chronic fatigue syndrome. Chronic fatigue syndrome? No, that can't be right. You're too sick. And people started saying, oh, it's that uh, yuppie disease, the disease that really doesn't exist and the patients actually are really um, imagining that they're sick. I told that to a guy high up at CDC and he said, oh no, you didn't really have those viruses. I said, really? He said, no, people with CFS, their tests look like they have viruses, but they don't really have them. <laughs> That's the level of denial in their head. There's $16 million in male pattern baldness, and we got three million bucks going for chronic fatigue syndrome. There's no way we're gonna go to the mall and show our numbers. We can't even walk to the mailbox. <laughs> there is a future you take for granted every day and never articulate to yourself, and yet it's always there. And when you come down with an illness, that has no end, it strips away that idea of a future. I want more for Omar from life than this. When I got sick, he took care of me. But I'd rather carry around all my life and have anything happen to you. He kept saying, you know, don't get discouraged. You never know what's around the corner. Things can change. I have this belief that if I can read a lot of science and do a lot of self-experimentation that I can turn this thing around to. Most of us look at what's around us and see very little, and yet we have the capacity to see infinity in the smallest of things. This is our life, and, and every day we're just so grateful for it. Plus, you learn from everything you survive.